how chess can revolutionize learning. I want to start by painting a picture. It's downtown Cincinnati in the spring. And there's a square of about 50 chess boards, just like in that picture, but outside. And at each board is a middle school student from inner city Cincinnati. And in the center of the square is one of the greatest chess players on the face of the earth. He's playing what's called a chess simul. He goes around each board and plays each game simultaneously, just like in this picture. And while he's on one side of the square, on the other side, a gust of wind blows three boards right off the table. The pieces go flying. The kids start crying. Their one chance to play one of the greatest players on the face of the earth. Gone with the wind. And he looks over, and he sees what happens. And he comes over, and he picks up every single piece and puts back all three games the exact way they were. He had 50 chess games going on in his head at the exact same time, and he remembered every single one of them. Now, this is a story from a tournament. Oops. Well, there's supposed to be a picture there of lots of children. So just imagine lots of children, <laughs> very diverse children. This is a story of a tournament that my brothers and I started a little over a decade ago uh, in Cincinnati. And when we had this idea for a chess tournament in a football stadium, that's a Cincinnati Bengals stadium. When we had this idea to hold a chess tournament in a football stadium, uh, we were quickly dismissed and even made fun of by some local politicians and radio hosts. And that was kind of understandable. Cincinnati was in a very bad way. It was reeling from nationally covered race riots. No one wanted to go downtown. And here were three boys babbling on about plastic pieces and a checkered board. But we continued with the idea. And our first year, we thought, you know, maybe 50 kids will show up. 350 showed up, K through 12. And then the next year, 450. And then 550. And since then, we've had to cap it at 700 K through 12 students from nine different states across the Midwest. It's one of the biggest tournaments in the country. Now, those politicians and radio hosts, they didn't underestimate us. I was like eight years old. I was handing out flyers and doing whatever my brothers told me to do. <laughs> what they underestimated was the game of chess. They underestimated its power. And they suffered from a common misconception that only smart people play chess, when in fact, it's the other way around. Chess makes you smart. It imbues you with values and skills that you'll use for the rest of your life, both in and outside the classroom. And we know this. We've proved this in study after study that chess increases kids' test scores in math and problem solving, critical reading, spatial reasoning. And this isn't hard to understand. Just look at the board. Before even making a move, a kid is already learning graphing coordinates. Pawn to e4, knight to f3. But this is just a cherry on top of chess's true value, life skills. Chess teaches things like devising strategy and tactics, patience and concentration, and most importantly of all, understanding the consequences of your actions and thinking ahead. In chess, you're always thinking two, three, four moves ahead, planning out your future and seeing all possible options. You know, there was a, a study uh, at a school in New York where they implemented a school-wide chess program. And two years later, they reported a 60% drop in their suspension rate. Chess teaches you to think before you move. And in life, that translates into thinking before you act. But I could go on forever, because chess has it all. Patience, pattern recognition, memory. These are two chess grandmasters playing each other blindfolded. They can't see the board. It's all in their head. Now, these aren't child prodigies. They don't have photographic memories. This is what chess has trained them to do. But even more important than all of this is that chess is an equalizer. Age doesn't matter. Gender doesn't matter. Religion doesn't matter. Race doesn't matter. Socioeconomic background doesn't matter. When I was 17, I played an eight-year-old at my own tournament, and he kicked my butt. An eight-year-old. It was embarrassing. When I was 10, I played an 80-year-old man who spoke no English. And he didn't need to. Our common language was chess. We learned from each other, and we learned from the board. Now, 
there's a, a school in Cincinnati um, that comes to our tournament each year, and they held a little tournament at their own school for their fifth graders. Uh, and one of the kids who entered the tournament was homeless, he had no parents, and he had straight Ds and Fs in school, one of the worst kids in the class. And he got all the way to the finals, and he played the best kid in the class, and he beat him. And afterwards, he was holding his trophy, and he turned to his coach, and he was crying. And his coach said, why are you crying? And he said, I'm not stupid. My entire life, I thought I was stupid, but I can't be stupid. I just won a chess tournament. Chess is an equalizer. It gives kids confidence, and it raises their self-esteem, and it shows them that even if they don't have the resources, they still have the potential to succeed. So what do we take from all this? Well, we need to get chess in schools. There are programs from New York to Seattle that are doing a great job of this. But it's not enough. They need our help. In recent years, we've become so focused on quantitative measures that, and direct ways of getting to those quantitative measures that we've forgotten about indirect ways of getting there, like chess, which do increase those quantitative tests, test scores but also give kids more than that. This is something that we can do together. And you know, there's a point you get to in a, a chess game uh, where there's a very you know, complex position. And you really don't want to move. It's like a minefield. You know, you're worried about making a mistake. But you don't really have a choice. Your other options are forfeit the game, Offer your opponent a draw, which they probably won't take, or let the clock run out and lose on time. We know what chess can do. We know what happens when you put a chess board in a kid's hand. And this is not an expensive thing we're talking about. This is like four or five bucks to put a chess board in a kid's hand. In fact, at that same school that I was talking about in Cincinnati, they were undergoing such severe budget cuts that the kids started drawing the chess board on the table in pencil and using scraps of paper as the pieces. We can do this. Those kids that come to our tournament each year, they understand that you have to move. They look at the board, they explore their options, they evaluate the consequences, and they act. Now it's our turn. You have the information, it's your move. Don't lose on time. Thank you very much.